come on. We will win. Because we will hit all game. We are motivated. We are dedicated. Come on now. Come on now. We will win. Because we are the best on the field. Then we hit the field like all day like on the blue light, on the best light, the best light, this ground light, house call light, and it sound like, and it sound like, and it sound like. Welcome to the Short Sports Show. I am your host, Daniel Short. Today is July 6th, 2016. And man, do we have a show for you guys today. Jam, Pat, college football news, the NFL, obviously NBA free agency, just a ton of news, including a 41-year-old making a comeback to sign with the Golden State Warriors. Are you kidding me? Get into that a little bit later in the show. They are just going crazy. Uh, you guys can follow me on Twitter at Short Sports Show. Become a fan on Facebook, the Short Sports Show. And buy Teespring t-shirts of the Short Sports Show. We have those on lock right now. You guys got to go get them. We only have, I believe, 11 or 10 days left uh, to sell those shirts. Uh, my goal is to reach 50. We're not close. <laughs> we need to get there. I need you guys. We only have... Uh, again, 11 or 10 more days to get those up on there, uh, to get those sold. So please go and do that. And if you can't, share the link. It's in the description to share with your friends and family. Let them know what you listen to. Support the show by buying a Teespring t-shirt. I have mine. It will be on its way here soon, and I'm excited for it. Again, teespring.com slash store slash the short sports show. Must go get it. Uh, as always, the intro you guys just heard, a shout out to Triune and EQ for uh, their song Forever. You can get that right now on uh, iTunes, everywhere. Uh, links are in the description down below, so shout out to them. Also, again, I will be in Houston, Texas once more this Saturday uh, doing um, some interviews. Obviously, Intergrind is a sponsor of the Short Sports Show, and they're having their grand opening now they've had an opening they've been open but he was sharing a facility with someone else now he's got his own gym he's got his own facility it's going to have a turf field inside of it there's going to be multiple nfl players there uh including his partner san diego chargers cornerback greg uh, craig mager excuse me he's going to be there along with uh, i believe three or four other nfl players uh and some other college athletes it's going to be awesome it starts at 12 noon Central Time in Houston, Texas. Uh, the, the the link will be in the description down below so you guys can go check it out and see the address uh, so you guys can, can attend as well. I'm uh, going to have interviews with them. He's going to have prizes. It's all free, and you, uh, you also get a consolation so you can talk to them about what your goals are, whether it's to gain muscle or lose weight or just get in shape overall. He's got a plan. He's got something for you, so go check it out. It's going to be awesome. Uh, Intergrind.com once again. And as always, let's hear about Intergrind and about Teespring. Go get those Teespring t-shirts right now, people. Today's show is sponsored by Intergrind. Based out of Houston, Texas, let former Texas State linebacker Michael Rackpo help you reach your fitness and nutrition goals. With plans starting at $6.99 a month, why not be a part of this rising program? Whether your goals are to lose weight, gain muscle mass, find the right off-season program, or even for you ladies out there to get that booty blast, you can do it all with Intergrind. Not in the Houston area, not a problem. Intergrind has a program that is personalized just for you. Intergrind has everything you need to meet your personal and healthy goals. NFL linebackers like Titans Brian Arakpo, Chiefs linebacker Derek Johnson, Oakland Raiders defensive back DJ Hayden. I, I mean, the list goes on and on, ladies and gentlemen. Panthers linebacker David Mayo and Buccaneers running back Charles Sims, along with many other young athletes, 
have already begun. Find your personalized workout and nutrition plan at intergrind.com and call 832-475-2829. Again, that's intergrind.com, 832-475-2829. Unleash your inner grind. What's up? I've got some amazing news. You can now buy the short sports show apparel on Teespring. That's right. I have two different designs up already, and they're amazing, and I love them, and I know you guys will love them too. Hurry now, as these shirts are only up for a certain number of days, and then they're gone. My goal is to sell at least 50 of each design, and the more they sell, the longer they're available. So help me make that happen. Teespring is a platform that makes it easy for anyone to create and sell high-quality products that people love with no cost or risk. So go to www.teespring.com slash stores slash the short sports show today. And after you make your purchase, tweet the show for a chance to be on the following week's show with me. Now, back to the show. Right, so we will start off with college football news first, as always. Then we'll work our work our, uh, I can't talk, work our way to the NFL, and then go to uh, NBA, which we have a lot to talk about, a lot of discussions. I, I need it ramped up here. I need it hyped on Twitter, at Short Sports Show. First off, LSU is doing something what all college football, or all college athletic programs should do. LSU is, to, uh, is going to require players and coaches to take sexual harassment classes, quote, There's only two other schools doing this at the moment. They're doing it in a reactive mode due to problems they've had. We're implementing this in a proactive mode. That's what LSU President F. King Alexander told the advocate. Uh, The idea was sparked at the recommendation from former Big 12 Commissioner Dan Beebe's consulting firm, who will handle the initial training of the Tigers, 400 athletes, and 250 employees. Um... I think it's smart. I think it's perfect. I think that's what a lot of college football, or excuse me, I keep saying college football. That's what we're talking about. A lot of college programs should be doing because this is a very important thing, and it's apparently a huge problem that we have here in uh, with college athletic programs. Obviously, we've seen the huge fall at Baylor right now. Uh, So I love it. I'm glad LSU is doing it. And again, it's one of those things you look at it and you're like, man, that's that's smart, but that's also common sense. So why isn't everybody else doing it? Again, there are two other programs doing it right now. They uh, I did not find out who they were, but it's because they're actually they've had problems. So it could be Baylor, uh, it could be Tennessee, who they've just settled uh, settled those claims with now. So it's gonna be interesting to see who those were, but. I'm glad LSU is taking those steps because, I mean, Louisiana, no disrespect, it isn't, you know, the the smartest place with a lot of people. So uh, it is good that LSU is doing something for all of its athletes and its employees slash coaches. Very, very good thing for them. Moving on, Alabama has self-reported 19 secondary recruiting violations, all of them stemming from the football program. By nature, secondary violations are minor in nature. For example, three of those violations stem from coaches improperly calling or texting recruits. Uh, penalties require the tie to refrain from corresponding from said recruit for two to two weeks to about 30-day periods. A third violation came when Alabama misplaced a trophy in an area where recruits could view uh, during an official visit. Apparently, you're not supposed to do that. Uh, that's the, quote, dreaded, impermissible recruiting decoration of an area. Yeah, that's getting a little little too ridiculous right there, just, just a tad bit. Uh, and also, the most serious violation that happened out of all of those came from when a former Tide player provided training to another cur- uh, to current players free of charge. Those players uh, involved made an... Uh, reinstitution to the NCAA by donating the free, uh, excuse me, the training fee to charity. So they gave back the money, but it wasn't like, you know, you, you still screwed up. You still screwed up, so you're still going to get hit with it. Uh, I don't think it's that big of a problem. A lot of these are just kind of small, minor things, trying to showcase a trophy. I mean, I don't. I think every recruit that's going out there to Alabama is like, oh, yeah, I know you got trophies. I know you're winning. 
And I'm not gonna. There's nothing wrong with that. No, I don't. I don't know why they had to go and showcase a trophy when we all know Alabama wins championships. Why you gotta go and mess up a rule? All right, text in and call in. Okay, bad. Don't do it. There's a time period of when you're supposed to do it, and just do it in those time periods. That's it. Giving free training, that can be a problem. That can be a problem. But other than that, you, you, you're about set. You're about good. All right, moving on. We have BYU quarterback Taysom Hill. Now, most of you guys remember him because he's going now. I mean, you should. If you're watching college football, you should know about him because this is going to be his sixth year of eligibility. Six years in college football. That's because back-to-back years, he's had either a leg fracture or a torn ACL. And because of those, he's talking to Nike. And Nike's talking to him and saying, let's work something out. Check this out. So Hill's in fortunate circumstances created an opportunity for Nike. Speaking to reporters during BYU's media days, Hill said Nike's engineers are using him as a case study for specially designed shoes working to prevent re-injury. Quote, I have custom-made shoe inserts since surgery, and I'll wear those in the offseason. Also, Nike is building a shoe that gives me more support through the arc, and I'll, uh, excuse me, and I'll include my orthotics as an insole on top of that. Man. He continues to say, quote, the ones I already ha- now have uh, excuse me, been modifying the, to my foot specifically. Nike is building an additional support in my arch as well. I'm part of Nike's research and development, and I'm sort of the guinea pig to be a part of it. We are literally exhausting every avenue to recover and to stay healthy and to make sure my foot doesn't make limitations, end quote. It's pretty cool. I I think that's an interesting story, and I think that's interesting what Nike's trying to do. And hey, you're getting some free shoes out of it that are most likely going to help you more than anything. So that's that's a good deal. That's a really good deal. Uh, but he's going to have already an issue. Not only he's he's good. I mean, he was a dark horse Heisman contender. Remember when he hurdled over the UT opponent? They dominate UT at BYU. It was like forty-one to twenty something. I mean, they just whipped Mac Brown's team. But the problem is, is that Tanner Magnum, he's a sophomore, and Magnum threw for 3,377 yards and 23 touchdowns while carrying the offense in Hill's absence. I mean, he absolutely just dominated while Taysom Hill was on on the bench. So BYU has two really good quarterbacks. The problem is, one of them is going to have to ride the bench. And it can't be Taysom Hill because... Did you really get eligibility for six years just to sit on the bench? Be too late to transfer, and he can't transfer because, I mean, he's he's exhausted all of his eligibility. Where does he go? What happens? It's going to be interesting to see. Baylor officials have granted a release to incoming freshman defensive end Brandon Bowen. Bowen is the 11th signee from the Bears' nationally ranked recruiting class to leave since former uh, head coach Art Bryles was fired in May. The Bears have lost half of the recruiting class. They had 22 players in 2016 recruiting class. (coughs) Excuse me, 11 of them. That's crazy. 11 of them. Gone. It was ranked 17th nat- nationally by ESPN Recruiting, and I'm pretty sure it doesn't rank that anymore. 11 out of the 22 players, not at Baylor. Not at Baylor. I love it. I love it. Absolutely love it. Hate the situation that happened. Love that the recruiting went down. Absolutely love it. Uh, Oklahoma cornerback Jordan Thomas was arrested and could face charges of interference public intoxication, and assault and battery on Thursday morning. According to Cleveland County Sheriff's Office, he was released from custody at 11.17 a.m. Central Time. Uh, According to the arrest report released by the Norman Police Department, the police were called to a Norman bar uh, bar after a fight 
and when the arresting officer arrived on the scene, Thomas was running away after a foot chase, which is pretty sad. I know he's intoxicated, but it's pretty sad when, unless that officer was fit, pretty sad that a college athlete, especially a DB, got outran by the police. Uh, after a foot chase, Thomas was eventually caught and arrested. The arresting officer wrote Thomas had a slurred speech and had the odor of alcohol coming from his person and admitted to having six shots. He did not say which shots they were, but they were alcohol shots. All that matters. As a junior, Thomas was a key member of Oklahoma's defense a year ago, starting in 11 games and finishing 46 t- with 46 tackles and five interceptions to earn all Big 12 second team honors. As a lone starting, uh, re- excuse me, lone returning starting cornerback, he is expected to be a big part of Oklahoma's secondary in 2016, and that now is shaky because you know he can, he's got to be suspended for several games because of this. Just have to see. Uh, let's move on here. It's uh, Georgia running back Sonny Michael. Seems like every athlete that has Michael and it's spelled M I C H or Mitchell or whatever. They always get injured. Yet the wide receiver got hurt. Was his last name, was his name Michael? Last name was Michael, and now Sonny Mitchell. Close enough. Stupid analogy. Excuse me. Stupid example. Well, running back Sonny Mitchell broke his left forearm Sunday evening, not working out, not helping a, you know someone in a, in a tragic accident. He was riding his ATV. And he broke his arm in that accident. Not saying how, not that maybe he just flipped or maybe he's just doing really something really stupid. But he broke his arm. Now, the good thing for Bulldog fans is that he's expecting to make a full recovery. But they didn't provide a timeline. And Georgia opens up the season September 3rd against North Carolina. Not, a, not an easy opponent. Mitchell finished the season at top of the team's stat charts with 219 carries, 1,100 yards, and eight touchdowns. His injury puts the Bulldogs' running game in a precautious position because Nick Chubb, his status also remains up in the air. It's not like he's good to go. It's not like, all right, he's ready. We we still got Nick Chubb. He's healthy. Kind of. Kind of right now. I mean, it's not certain. So, not looking good for Georgia. Finally, last bit of college football news before we go on to the NFL, and that's Boston College will retire the jerseys of Atlanta Falcons quarterback Matt Ryan and Carolina Panthers linebacker Luke Keekley in separate ceremonies during the 2016 season. Ryan and Keekley will be the ninth and tenth players to have their jersey retired by Boston College. Now, Keekley's jersey will be retired at the Eagles' October 22nd game against Syracuse, while Ryan will be honored at the November 19th game against Connecticut. Now, Keekley was one of the top players in B.C. history. I mean, he led the nation in tackles for two seasons in a row, and that quickly transitioned into the NFL at Carolina. He's recorded more than 100 tackles in each of his first four NFL seasons. That's not bad. And he was named the AP Defensive Rookie of the Year in 2012 and and the Defensive Player of the Year in 2013. As for Matt Ryan, he led BC as high as number two in the Associated Press at top 25 in 2007, and his uh, and his first experience uh, at the ACC title game. In eight seasons in the NFL he, in Atlanta, he has thrown for 3,200 yards and 202 touchdowns. Not bad, not bad at all. So we'll move on to the NFL, but before that, check out Patreon. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the show, but I want to say first off, thank you for all of your support. Without you, I'd just be some guy talking to a microphone. And I got some amazing news. I recently joined Patreon. And in case you're wondering, Patreon is an amazing way for you to earn some sweet rewards by supporting the Short Sports Show. I promise you, you will love the perks and your support will help build this show. Go to www.patreon.com slash the short sports show and view the amazing rewards you would get directly from me to you by donating to the show. The link is in the description, so when you have some time, 
check it out. And again, thank you for listening and supporting the Short Sports Show. Now back to me rambling on about something. McLean has been suspended yet again, this time for 10 games, the first 10 games of the 2016 NFL season for violating the NFL substance abuse policy the league announced. McLean, only 26 years old, was suspended for the first four games of last season for violating the same policy. It's ridiculous. In March, the Cowboys re-signed McLean to a one-year deal worth up to $5 million. He's set to receive a $1.25 million base salary and could earn $125,000 for each game. He is on the 46-man roster, maxing out at $2 million. He is also he also has a one million in playing time incentives and well he's not going to get majority of that because again he's out for ten games I believe he is appealing but it doesn't matter he it's it's not going to go through in eleven games in twenty fifteen he was credited with ninety seven uh, tackles two sacks nine tackles for loss ten pressures one interception and three pass breakups he was he was really good last year he fit in perfectly again with Dallas. He stepped up when plays needed to be made, but he's not stepping up off the field. And the Cowboys, this isn't the only player, so someone in that locker room is not setting a positive example and is not doing their job as a defensive leader. There's nobody on that team that's a defensive leader. Orlando McClain is not that guy, suspended for the first 10 games. Randy Gregory, who was just a rookie last year, suspended for the first four games this year. Demarcus Lawrence, another guy who led the Cowboys with eight sacks last season, is also suspended for four games after his appeal was also denied on Thursday. There is nobody in that defense that is wanting to be a leader whatsoever because nobody's setting a positive example, not the coaches and not the players. Because it's ridiculous when your top three defensive players are suspended for at least four games, and one of the main guys is contributing to that defense and that success. And it looks like sometimes he can be a vocal leader with Rolando McLean now suspended for 10 games. And there's already articles with the, by the Fort Worth uh, Star Telegram, Dallas Morning, New- the Dallas Morning News, all saying that they should cut Rolando McLean. They should just move on. But can they do that? Who is going to take their place? Sean Lee isn't the guy, that's for sure. If his ass is even still playing. You know, he's just going to get hurt. Right when that AC kicks on the AT&T Stadium, boom, legs goes out. That one wind knocks him out. So who's going to be the guy? Jalen Smith isn't going to play until at least next year, and it could be even two years. Who knows with this injury? Because there's even an article that said that his knee hasn't, There's nothing big time that's happened to his knee. Nothing shocking in a good way. Nothing uh, that shows huge signs that he's making recovery. It's just staying the same. It's not good. McLean will be eligible to return for the Cowboys active roster on November 21st following the team's November 20th game against the Baltimore Ravens. After advancing through the preliminary round of the men's long jump on Saturday, Marquise Goodwin said it was, a, it, it was a dream of his to win an Olympic gold medal and a Super Bowl ring, both of which, quote, are very hard to attain. That's especially true for Goodwin now. He won. He's a receiver for the Buffalo Bills who have never won a Super Bowl and hadn't been to playoffs in 16 years, so that's it's kind of tough. I mean, they're, they're on the rise, but historically, eh, it's not good for them right now. Two, despite having the two longest leaps in the world earlier this year, he failed to make the U.S. Olympic team in Sunday's trials final. Goodwin finished seventh with a jump of 27 feet and three-fourths inches, more than a foot shy of the winning jump that was 28 and two and one-fourth inches. Quote, at the time, it's frustrating, but you really can't dwell on that. Life is too good to harp on a situation like that. Maybe at a time... I can be a little disappointed, but now I'm alive, and there's much more to look forward to. I'll take a few days off to get my mind right and start getting ready for football. Camp is less than a month away. That's what Goodwin had to say. So he has a positive attitude, and he's done really good things on the Olympic side as well. Um, Sucks that he couldn't win it, but doesn't mean 
There's not next. There's not next time, because uh, this guy is pretty athletic. So here comes a stupid story, guys. I just want to just get it out there. Johnny Manziel. I know, I know, I know. The past two weeks we've talked about him, and I said unless he is dead or signs with a team, we would not talk about him. But this is c- kind of close in one of those categories. Johnny Manziel, obviously, his NFL career is 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 over. I mean, it's let's just all accept it. It's it's over. It's over. But there is a football league that is willing to take him up and say, hey, we got you if you want to play. And that's the Arena Football League. AFL Commissioner Scott Booter told TMZ Sports, quote, we could provide a strong platform for him to demonstrate that he is back. We would also work with him and provide him whatever help he needed to live a healthy life, end quote. Now, of course, the NFL suspended earlier uh, Manziel earlier this week w- uh, for four games of the 2016 season because of a violation of the league's substance abuse policy. But a lot of sources have said that that's not the only thing he'll get. They just haven't determined what they're going to do with him, too. So, I mean, he could still be suspended for another additional year. And that means it wouldn't even go in effect until a team signs him. So you, a team would have to sign him be without him for an entire year and then get him. Who's going to do that? Who's going to want a guy that cannot do anything with the team on payroll for an entire year? That's, no, that ain't, ain't happening. But I thought I'd throw it out there because I thought it was interesting and thought well, what of the possibility of Johnny Manziel playing in the Arena Football League. It'd be interesting. It'd be, it'd be smart for him. I mean, he's got to do something. To, I don't even think the CFL will take him. So, might as well play in the Arena Football League. He'll be the star again, that's for sure. All righty. So moving on, we have uh, I'm, I'm, I don't get into the pop culture news and and and, and talking about uh, stuff that you normally see see on like those magazines when you're at HEB when you're at the store or something in the checkout line. You'll you'll see uh, fake magazines, right? I don't I don't get into that that type of news. And this is something that would be in that category, but I thought it was pretty interesting enough to pick it up on the show because I mean we ha- we have a lot to talk about, but. It's it's interesting enough. So Sierra, who is obviously engaged to Seattle Seahawks quarterback Russell Wilson, Sierra fears for Russell Wilson's life in the hands of her ex. That's her ex fiance. Uh, she is fearful that her ex fiance, future the rapper, will kill her current fiance, Russell Wilson. Mm. Yeah. DMZ reports Sierra detailed several of Future's messages that she deemed as real threats to Russell Wilson. In one message, Sierra points out a tweet from her ex that shows several football emojis and a gun pointed to that direction. And honestly, when you think about it, 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 that's not a funny joke. And what else could that really mean? I mean, who is literally going to shoot a football? Nobody. Blake Gate, what is he, what is he talking about? She claims threats were made several times, including apparent references in a song Future released last month, which he raps about pulling up on someone. This is you know how a white person wrote this because it, it put, which means uh, which is street slang for a drive by. I think we all know pulling up on someone is exactly what it means. Sierra called the threats frightening and socially irresponsible. There has been a recent rash of gun violence, says TMZ, which has reportedly seen the document. The court papers were filed and added to her 15 million defamation and slander lawsuit against her ex in which she says Future is destroying her reputation as well as Russell's. I mean, as as a sports talk host, I don't see Future doing anything to 
destroy Russell Wilson's reputation. Because I don't, I don't, you see what he does outside of football, going to those, uh, to the hospitals, I believe, what, every Wednesday or every Thursday he goes to, uh, and he, he talks to those kids, and he's always doing something positive. Um, I, I don't see his reputation being hurt at this at all. I don't think he cares because I don't think he, he thinks Future will do anything, and I honestly don't think Future will do anything either. I think he's just trying to be tough and hard and, you know, whatever. Um, but she also claims that Future has bashed the engaged couple in multiple interviews and on social media. She alleges that he's dragging their names through the mud to promote his own music. Uh, in the suit, Sierra calls out Future for a radio interview in which he discussed a paparazzi photo of Russell pushing Sierra and Future son in his stroller. Okay, I mean, it's kind of he's kind of in that position where it's okay for him to, on a stroller. I, in the interview, Future said, quote, she'll probably set him up. You let... You're letting them catch that photo, leaving my son out of all the publicity stunts. The suit cited other times in which he used profane language about her, and the strong songstress wants her ex untoward tweets deleted and wants a judge to order him to refrain from saying anything about the family matters regarding their son and future tweets. And when she says future tweets, as in like the real future, like as in in the future, not future tweets yeah anyways I, I thought that was pretty interesting enough to talk about and get your guys opinion on it uh you know i i don't think it's that big of a deal i think they're fine i think everything's gonna be okay but i mean future really gonna go and shoot russell wilson i mean nah, he ain't that he ain't that russell's smart enough to no, if any situation gets anywhere close to that, that he'll, he'll be out of it. It's not nothing too crazy. So we also have, uh, of course, last week we did the, um, what you would call it? The I'm just trying to write this time down. We did the a the top five questions for the AFC West. This week we've got the NFC West. Next week we'll do the. AFC South and then the NFC South the following you know we're gonna keep it going uh again this week we're gonna start off with the NFC West and that is can Chip Kelly fix Colin Kaepernick now the 49ers are looking to bounce back after a disappointing 2015 season where they went 5-11 and and Kaepernick went through another season of struggle under head new head coach Jim Tom Sula who I absolutely hated as a head coach I knew he was gonna be terrible I said on the show multiple times that he was gonna be terrible and guess what he was terrible. Uh, a day after a 27-6 collapse at St. Louis in Week 8, Kaepernick lost his starting job to backup Blaine Gabbert, which Gabbert came out actually out of nowhere. He was actually kind of good last year, to be honest. Given the team that he had and the coaching staff and the whole issues the 49ers have, he was actually kind of good. So, I mean, that's it's shocking because we all think of Blaine Gabbert and we're like, eh, he, he sucks, he's bad. I think we think about his time in Jacksonville and being a backup right now. It's just like, no, he sucks. But Gaepernick was honestly, he was bad. And with Gabbard starting as their new quarterback, the 49ers narrowly won 17-16. to 16. On November 21st, the 49ers announced that Kaepernick would miss the rest of the season due to an injured left shoulder that required surgery. And a quick fact about all of this, which is pretty interesting, <laughs> Kaepernick, has half as many surgeries as he does touchdowns in a year. He's got three surgeries to six passing touchdowns. I mean, that's bad. It's not good. It's, it's, it's bad. It's real bad. So, can Chip Kelly come in and after his fallout with the Philadelphia Eagles come to San Francisco, back to the West Coast, and can he fix Colin Kaepernick? Because what we've seen the past few years hasn't been the Colin Kaepernick that we once knew. This is, I mean, you don't have the talent w from taking your team to the Super Bowl and to multiple NFC Championship games, and you just lose it. And I get there's a new coaching staff. They honestly should have never fired Jim Harbaugh. It was a stupid decision. Um, but how do you go from 
that quarterback to what we see right now? I mean, you don't. You don't just, it doesn't just disappear. He's got the talent. So what's the deal? I think it's going to be much better. I mean, it really can't get any worse for Colin Kaepernick unless he gets hurt again. So when the question comes, can Chip Kelly fix Colin Kaepernick? I think to a certain extent, yes, he can. I think we'll see, and I'm not just talking about the read option. That's what everybody just straight goes to. That's what they all assume. They think they think Chip Kelly and the Oregon offense, and it's just in, with Colin Kaepernick being a mobile quarterback that it's just going to be straight read option, all that. Will those plays work? Absolutely. Are they going to ha- are they going to work every single time, or is it going to be an 80 percent success rate? No, it's not, because people aren't going to know that's going to come, and honestly, they're not going to run it that much. But I think it's going to, the quicker passing game, the short, shorter throws for Colin Kaepernick, and trying to get that running game established with Carlos Hyde and a few other of those running backs, I think we'll start seeing Kaepernick to be uh, uh, somewhat back to his old form. And I'm not saying they're going to go to the playoffs. I think they'll probably just win three, four, maybe five games of max next season. But I think we'll start seeing a Ka- Colin Kaepernick. He'll show a lot more flashes than what he has in the past few years of the real Colin Kaepernick, which we saw him take the 49ers to the NFC Championship games multiple years and then into the Super Bowl. I think that's – we're, we're going to see somewhat close to that. We're going to see a lot more flashes than we did. But it is going to take several years, three years max, to get the 49ers team back up, back up and going because this team is much older, obviously, and they just do not have the talent to compete, not only in their division, but – overall in the NFL right now. Sorry, 49ers fans. I know I'm going to get a lot of hate. I'm going to get it. I I understand. It comes with it. I don't care. How about this one? New city, new team. After receiving permission to void its lease on the Edward Jones Dome in St. Louis, Missouri during the 2015 season, the team officially filed an application to uh, uh, relocate to Los Angeles on January 4th, 2016. That's the Los Angeles Rams. Now, in the interim, before that stadium is constructed to open up in 2019, the Rams will play seven of their home games in Los Angeles at the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. The Rams traded up to select Cal quarterback Jared Goff to lead this team that continues to make very questionable decisions, management decisions. Can the 49ers go a season that doesn't finish 8-8? Eight and eight? Because that's, that's, that's all they are. If you guys have watched the All or Nothing so far, the Arizona Cardinals, which we'll talk about the Cardinals here in just a second, I love it because Bruce Aarons even called out, and I completely forgot about it when they were playing last season. He straight up called out the Rams saying that uh, Cardinals are better and that the Rams are just a team that's 8-8 eight and eight every year, which is true because that's all they have been, and it's just crazy. I love Jeff Fisher. I love Jeff Fisher as a coach. I loved him when he was at Tennessee, when – uh, Steve McNair, rest in peace, when he was there, Eddie George, the good old days, Keith Bullock, Javon Kurtz, ev- oh my goodness, the, the team back in the day. But I don't know if it's just his coaching ability right now because new, the Rams, they have the, def- the best defensive line in the NFL. Without a doubt, hands down, the best defensive line in the NFL. It's not a question. You want to debate me? Come right up in the comment section. I dare you to. Because the Rams have the best. So how do you have a, such a talented team and fail to win more than eight games? If you want to talk quarterbacks, I understand they haven't had the best, but the offense hasn't been running smoothly. Because Nick Foles was doing really good, and it looked like the Rams got the better of the trade when they traded Sam Bradford for Nick Foles and, the, and the, the draft picks because it's like, well, Nick Foles did, you know, pretty well. I mean, he had that, that season before he had thrown for seven passing touchdowns in a game. Or six, whatever. Either way, Bradford was terrible. Uh, Foles was doing better. And for Foles to not succeed was shocking. And I get the offensive line for the Rams hasn't been the best, but now you have Todd Gurley. They need some more offensive weapons. I was shocked to see that they didn't really draft the best of receivers in the draft. And that questionable tight end that they got. I think Jared Goff is obviously going to have 
there's growing pains. I, that's without question. Is this another eight and eight team? Honestly, it's looking like that, and I don't think anything more. Maybe nine and seven, and that's honestly a stretch. That is a stretch. But it's more like an eight and eight, seven and nine team, which is a huge jump from what two and fourteen that they went. So you're gonna see some success. The offense is the production is gonna go up. Defense should be there. They lost some key uh, free agent guys, but I think they'll be able to replenish a little bit. But it, it might be a change, and I don't know if you go for a coaching change now, because do you really you go in one year with a brand new quarterback and live with his growing pains for better or worse, and do you really if uh, another eight and eight season or worse, do you really go and fire your coaching staff, and now you're bringing in a new coaching staff with a guy that's only a quarterback that's only played for one year and then you're really going through the same process again of growing pains because now he's got a new entire offense that he's got to learn again it might be backfire uh is this a really a new seahawks team everybody's talking about since uh you know marshall lynch is gone a few other guys are thinking who is the seahawks team now seahawks will attempt to improve their 10 and 6 record from 2015 and will attempt to compete for a third Super Bowl in four seasons. A Super Bowl appearance, that is. Obviously, the loss of Marshawn Lynch is going to hurt. It's going to hurt. But guys like Thomas, Mini Beast, Rolls, Christian Michael, Alex Collins, who I really like, CJ Procise, and Trey Madden will easily create a rotation that will get any defense on its heels and get them tired very quickly. With a healthy Jimmy Graham, Dougie B, Jermaine Curse, uh, Tyler Lockett, this should get the offense a little more pass happy friendly. I mean, it, I mean Russell, he, what he threw for the most yards he thrown all uh, in his entire career last year, somewhere around that. Uh, you're also gonna have rookie Kenny Lawler, who is getting a lot of hype in in the OTAs, and it should be exciting because this guy Pete Carroll loves him. And I've been watching, obviously, I watched his, his film in college, and I think he's gonna quickly move his way up. I saw. Uh, SB Nation has their NFL, their Seahawks one, uh, their, their website, and it's called Field Goals. They re- they put an article up there who's going to be the, the fifth receiver or something like that. And they put Kenny Lawler as, as a bubble. Whoever that writer is, I don't know who he is, and I'm, I'm not trying to call him out, but I'm just saying you obviously don't know who Kenny Lawler is. And obviously you haven't been paying attention to what Pete Carroll's been saying and what this offensive staff has been saying because they absolutely love him. He's been, quote, he catches everything that comes his way, end quote. So to put him on a bubble is lack of knowledge and not knowing your own team because this guy is quickly going to get up there and could be a rising star. And, that's, and, and I know that's a lot to say for a guy that hasn't even played it down yet. But Kenny Lawyer is something special to be watch out for, and he's not a bubble guy. Uh, also, the, while the defense loses Bruce Irvin in free agency to the Oakland Raiders, this isn't the first time the Hawks have lost some defensive talent and rebounded from the following season. Brandon uh, Browner, he comes back after a terrible stint in NOLA, uh, but if he can return to his form when he was there when LOD was created, then the defense should be just fine. This is a new Seahawks team, but I believe it can be a better than even the past teams that the 206 has ever seen. I think this could be one of the best Seahawks teams out there. And I know that's a huge statement and a huge take to take because of losing Marshawn Lynch, losing Bruce Irvin, Brandon Meebane, and some of the other guys. I know it's a stretch, but I think the Seahawks are not, they're not rebuilding. They're definitely reloading, and I think it's something even special right now, something better. Finally. Will the Cardinals, the Arizona Cardinals, get over the hump in 2015? Or excuse me, in 2016. In 2015, though, the Cardinals clinched their first ever NFC West title since, I can't believe it, I didn't mean ever, since 2009, in addition to their first 13-win season in franchise history. They also clinched a first-round bye for the first time in franchise history. The Cardinals beat the Green Bay Packers 26-20 in overtime in a divisional round, giving quarterback Carson Palmer his first career playoff win. However, they were blown out by the uh, by the Carolina Panthers as they went out to go win the uh, or win the NFC Championship and then lose the Super Bowl. Um, in free agency, 
The Cardinals signed defensive back veteran Tyvon Branch and veteran offensive lineman Evan Mathis while re-signing several key players. Their main targets were cornerback safeties and offensive line. And they traded for uh, Chandler Jones with, from the uh, New England Patriots, sending Jonathan Cooper in a late second round pick to New England. And then in the 2016 NFL Draft, the Cardinals rolled the dice on Ole Miss defensive end Robert Kendici. And it goes without saying that the Arizona has Cardinals, they have a very talented team. They, that's without a doubt. But can they get over the hump? They got over last year with the divisional playoff win, the first playoff win for Carson Palmer. But then they got absolutely crushed by the Carolina Panthers. And I know that next hump is really reaching the Super Bowl. I mean, they made it to the divisional round. They won the NFC West. So the next hump has to be reaching the Super Bowl. And if you watched All or Nothing, which if you have not watched it yet on Amazon right now, you're crazy. You're crazy. Because even if you're not a Cardinals fan, you can even hate the Arizona Cardinals. You will love this series. You absolutely love it. If you love the inside, in-depth football, it's so much better than the Hard Knocks. It's not even competition to Hard Knocks. It's so much better. I absolutely loved it. I'm going to watch it all over again because I want to wa- see things that I missed, and I absolutely loved it. Amazing. I'm not even a Cardinals fan. Uh, you know, so the Alex Stump is really reaching the Super Bowl, and Bruce Arian says in All or Nothing that it's not about going to the Super Bowl. It's about putting the damn ring on. I think it says the F word, but we ain't going to drop the F bomb on the show. So the NFC West is going to come down to the Cardinals or the Seahawks. And then those teams will have to jump in the NFC playoffs with so much more talented teams in the AFC. It's not even close. It's just the Broncos and Patriots, and that's it. Maybe not even the Broncos anymore. It's just the Patriots and and the Steelers now. Will 2016 be the year for the Cardinals, or will it be another playoff appearance and another playoff loss? Let me know in the comments section to those answers to your questions in there. And and the last question is, who, who will win the NFC West? Who will win it? I have the Cardinals winning it very close to the Seahawks. I just switched. After watching All or Nothing, I picked the Cardinals. But before then, I had picked the Seahawks. Cardinals winning it, then the Seahawks, then the Rams, then the 49ers. Let me know in the comment section your uh, predictions for the 2016 NFC West uh, division and also other things. Follow me on Twitter, at Short Sports Show. And as always, God first, God bless. See you guys on the show. Come on over to the show. Come on over. All right, guys. So. Uh, that is on good, obviously going to be on YouTube. And the Detroit Lions have released Stephen Tolick on Tuesday, four months after the veteran was told that he um, wasn't in their plans for 2016. It's kind of shocking that you just don't tell a guy and then you wait. But it was because of contract, or excuse me, uh, because of salary cap that they waited to cut him uh, because now they'll save five and a half million against salary cap. And had they done it sooner after when they told him, uh, it was going to be a much bigger charge on them. It was actually, they were gonna, not going to save as much. Um, so now they save $5.5 million against the salary cap. And Tolik, who's been their leading tackler, was seven, 107 tackles um, last season. And he was the guy who tore his ACL celebrating his sack against Aaron Rodgers in 2014. Um, but every season except for 2014 when he got hurt, he's had 100-plus tackles every year since 2009. Been a guy you can rely on. What's up? I've got some amazing news. You can now buy the short sports show apparel on Teespring. That's right. I have two different designs up already, and they're amazing, and I love them, and I know you guys will love them too. Hurry now, as these shirts are only up for a certain number of days, and then they're gone. My goal is to sell at least 50 of each design, and the more they sell, the longer they're available. So help me make that happen. Teespring is a platform that makes it easy for anyone to create and sell high-quality products that people love with no cost or risk. So go to www.teespring.com slash stores slash the short sports show today. And after you make your purchase, tweet the show for a chance to be on the following week's show with me. Now, back to the show. Today's show is sponsored by Intergrind. Based out of Houston, Texas, let former Texas State linebacker Michael Rackpo help you reach your fitness and nutrition goals. With plans starting at $6.99 a month, why not be a part of this rising program? Whether your goals are to lose weight, gain muscle mass, find the right off-season program, or even for you ladies out there to get that booty blast, you can do it all with Intergrind. Not in the Houston area, not a problem. Intergrind has a program that is personalized just for you. 
Intergrind has everything you need to meet your personal and healthy goals. NFL linebackers like Titans Brian Arakpo, Chiefs linebacker Derek Johnson, Oakland Raiders defensive back DJ Hayden. I, I mean, the list goes on and on, ladies and gentlemen. Panthers linebacker David Mayo and Buccaneers running back Charles Sims, along with many other young athletes, have already begun. Find your personalized workout and nutrition plan at intergrind.com and call 832-475-2829. Again, that's intergrind.com, 832 832- 4752829 unleash your inner grind So an interesting story that happened um well I mean it happened Saturday night but it we all, all the whole press the whole media just got it uh this morning and late last night Jacksonville Jaguars running back Denard Robinson was found asleep at the wheel by authorities at his car as his car was sinking into a retention pond in Jacksonville, Florida, earlier Sunday. A female also uh, was also asleep in the passenger seat. A Robinson Chevy Impala when police officers approached the vehicle uh, approximately 4.22 a.m. Both Robinson and the passenger had to be assisted out of the vehicle, and police determined Robinson wasn't impaired, so no DUI charges were filed against the 25-year-old running back. Robinson's car was totaled. Authorities didn't uh, observe any skid marks to indicate that he tried his brakes before the car hit the water. Just fell asleep at the wheel. Both of them did. They just both knocked out. And boom. Uh, Robinson acknowledged the incident in a tweet Tuesday and said, quote, I just wanted to let everyone know that I was involved in a single car accident on Saturday night. And thankfully, everyone was safe and remained unharmed. I thank God every day for the opportunities he has presented with, uh, presented me with, and I'm grateful every morning to wake up healthy. I should not have been driving that late or when I was tired, but again, I am glad everyone was safe. God bless, end quote. Robinson played for the Jaguars for three seasons, rushing for 914 yards with five touchdowns in 42 games, 12 starts. He's ex- uh, expected to be a change of pace option in the backfield. Uh, behind starter Chris Ivory, which would be an interesting little duo in the back. Obviously, they have uh, what's his face, um, CJ Yeldon. They have him to start it off uh, or out, help him out as well. So, also, we have uh oh, camera. Okay, sorry, camera's messing up. Uh, all, after a month, a full month. Without dialogue, the Denver Broncos and general manager John Elway personally called Von Miller over the 4th of July weekend to express his desire to work at a long-term deal. The two sides, the Broncos and Miller, are now on the clock with the July 15th deadline for franchise players to come to long terms on deals. Um, And what else we got here? So apparently the Broncos hope that it'd be an icebreaker with Elway and Miller said to have spent about 10 to 15 minutes on the phone this past weekend. Denver general manager letting his franchise player know that the Broncos still love him and still want to re-sign him. Duh. Uh, Elway told Miller that Denver would reach out to his agents this week in an effort to jumpstart this talk and get this process going and say, hey, we, we need to sign you like ASAP, like now. We need you need to come to camp or you know get ready for camp and we, we need you on the roster. We need you to sign next contract. Just last month, Miller publicly stated he would not play this season under the franchise tag, and all contract between the sides had been seized. They were just done. Uh, ain't happening. Not doing it. I'm frustrated, and I'm going to let you know how I feel because I'm greedy and I need more money. That's what, that's what Miller's basically saying. Some around the league thought they were hard feelings between the two sides, which could be why Elway personally reached out to Miller himself. Now, Miller, obviously the MVP of the Super Bowl 50, reached uh, excuse me, received the Broncos' exclusive franchise tag on March 1st. And unless Miller and Denver can reach an agreement on a long-term deal by July 15th, Miller will make an average of the top five salaries out of, of his position for this year. And since it is uh, an exclusive tag, it will prohibit uh, Miller from talking to any other teams. He can't talk to anybody else. So my question to you listening right now, does Von Miller re-sign with the Broncos, or does the top pass rusher sit out the entire 2016 season? I I don't know. That's I think that's stretching it. Isn't it like 16 million 
for the franchise tag in one year, or maybe twenty something million. I I don't even know. I just know it was so far up there, and he's so far up his own behind that he's wanting more money. I get you want a long term contract. That's what they offered him, and millions of millions of million million millions of millions of dollars per year, and he's still saying no. He's still saying I need more money. Obviously, he does not care about his teammate. You can tell he's not a team player because wouldn't you, obviously, you want your money. You want to make sure your family is financially stable. And with that contract they offered him, he's financially stable for life. He could break his leg and he is fine. Or, okay, maybe not that far. I mean, you know. But he, he's good. His family's good. So you're not a team player because wouldn't you want some money left over so maybe the Broncos could actually go and get a better quarterback? Maybe add some more weapons on the offense. Maybe get some more DBs. Uh, another linebacker to help you out uh, in the middle or something. Don't you want more players? Don't you want to help your team? That's what I do. I want to make sure I get mine. Make sure I talk to my account, my financial advisor, whoever. And I say, am I good? Am I set in case something bad happens to me? Is my family okay? If I can't work anymore, is my family going to be okay? If so, yes. All right. I want this. This make sure it's reasonable. Make sure we can help out the team. That's what I need. Von Miller is not saying that. He's like, I need me. I need my glasses. I need my uh, my chicken farm. I need everything in between because that's all I care about. So, question again is, will Von Miller resign with the Broncos or does the top pass rusher sit out the entire 2016 season? Let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, so when X, yeah, so last bit of NFL news here before we move on to the NFL, and that is Arizona Cardinals backup quarterback Drew Stanton has evaluated his options in free agency and has uh has been looking at it, and he didn't look just at short term. He's looking at the long term. He signed a two year contract worth six and a half million on March eighth, a day before uh, free agency began, knowing that he would be Carson Palmer's replacement. In Arizona, when the current starter decides to hang it up, and I mean, Ari- uh, Carson Palmer's not that young. So he said, quote, I've had at least discussions with everybody in the franchise about the idea, and there's a chance for me to be able to start when he's done. So that's the whole goal of this. Stan saw firsthand in 2014 how quickly he could go from being a backup who hadn't thrown a regular season pass in more than three full seasons to the starter. When Palmer got hurt in the week one that year, uh, I don't think it was week one. Was it when, like week 11 or something? Or was it week one? I don't know. When he got hurt, the team handed to Stan and who ended up playing nine games starting eight of them. Yeah, it had to be week one then. Uh, and started eight of them going six and three as a starter. Not bad. Now, Stan's relationship with head coach Bruce Arians is entering his fifth season. Stan played from in, in Indianapolis in 2012 when Arians was Colts offensive coordinator and an interim head coach for 12 games. Between the relationship, the experience, and the potential opportunity, Stanton saw Arizona as a place to stay for a while. Quote, who knows how long Carson will play for? That's true. Who knows? I think you're the guy. I think they're going to draft the quarterback coming up here in the next year's draft. Uh, you know, Brad Kyle falls, Chad Kelly, they fall down to the lower 20s. I think we see Cardinals taking a chance on that guy over Drew Stanton. No disrespect to Drew Stanton. Obviously, he did good, but... I think I'd rather take a, a chance on Brad Kaya or Chad Kelly, possibly, um, when it comes to that situation. But we shall see. Here is, of course, Teespring. Go get those T-shirts right now. I know you haven't ordered one yet. Go get them right now. Go get them right now. At least share it on your Twitter and your, your social media. Go share it right now. Teespring.com slash uh, store slash the short sports show. Check it out. Hey, guys. Sorry to interrupt the show, but I want to say first off, thank you for all of your support. Without you, I'd just be some guy talking to a microphone. And I got some amazing news. I recently joined Patreon. And in case you're wondering, Patreon is an amazing way for you to earn some sweet rewards by supporting the Short Sports Show. I promise you, you will love the perks. And your support will help build this show. Go to www.patreon.com slash the short sports show and view the amazing rewards you would get directly from me to you. By donating to the show. The link is in the description. So when you have some time, 
check it out. And again, thank you for listening and supporting the Short Sport Show. Now back to me rambling on about something. Obviously, the biggest news of the NBA free agency is Kevin Durant making his decision to sign with the Golden State Warriors, saying his experience, quote, he has experienced, quote, by far the most challenging few weeks of my professional life. He announced on Monday his decision to leave the Oklahoma City Thunder on, <coughs> excuse me, in a post on the Players' Tribune. Love the article, by the way. Nice job. Uh, Durant is expected to sign a two-year, $54.3 million contract. The deal will include a player option after the first year to get more money. Uh, Durant, After Durant signs with Golden State, the two-time reigning MVP Stephen Curry will become the fourth highest paid player on that team. And with Durant obviously being number one, followed by Klay Thompson at $16.6 million, Draymond Green at $15.3 million, and Curry at $12.1 million who also could become a free agent after next season. So you got the, the, the question of Curry or Durant or possibly losing someone else. Warriors head coach Steve Kerr was in Hawaii when he uh, learned about the Durant's decision to uh, join Golden State via the Player Tribune. So my question is, and we're going to dissect into this, how does Kevin Durant, how does he fit in with the Golden State Warriors? Well, the signing of Durant, the Warriors will become the third team in NBA history to finish the season with the league's best record and then add a former NBA most valuable player in the offseason. They joined the 09-10 Cleveland Cavaliers joint having Shaquille O'Neal and the 1985-86 Boston Celtics when they added Bill Walton. Now for the Warriors, their odds to win an NBA championship moved from the 3-2 three, three, after the finals to 2-3 following Durant's announcement. So these whole odd crap i they're just so stupid the three two the two three why don't you want to say you're the favorite like why can't we just put a percentage behind it instead of just saying three two two three I, to me that makes it look worse but it obviously it means better but whatever now using the mvp voting as a barometer between you know the warriors they now have three of the top seven players in the nba from last season Stephen curry won the second mvp in as many years durant he finished fifth with Draymond Green, or excuse me, uh, Durant finished fifth, and Draymond Green finished seventh in the voting in 2015-16. Not bad. Not bad at all. Now, those three, they will play alongside Klay Thompson, who's 276 three-point field goals in 2015-16, ranked third in a single season in NBA history. Yikes. Now, Durant will most likely slot into the lineup in, in take Harrison Barnes's place obviously he's gone and Durant averaged nearly 16 points more per game than Barnes did last season so you can kind of in a way you can predict saying oh well that's 16 more points in a game per game kind of whatever Durant also averaged more than three more rebounds per game and more than three more assists per game Curry and Durant were first and third in scoring last season and if they keep up their pace averages uh, if they keep up their averages next season, they can do something a pair of teammates hasn't done since 1983. And that is, you ask, the last time a pair of teammates finished in the top three in scoring in the ninth was the 1982-83 season when Alex English, and bear with me here because I practiced all morning and I, could, I still don't think I got it, got it down. And Kiki Vandenwitche? I don't know. He was with the Nuggets. You could go look up the 92-83 Nuggets. And find Alex Engl English and Kiki Vanden Witchy. <laughs> you do it better than me, let me know. Uh, finished. Uh, they both finished first and second. Not bad. Now, Durant was the only active NBA player to average 28 points and 7 rebounds while sh at least shooting 50 percentage from the field in three different seasons. The only players in NBA history to do it more times than Durant is this list of Hall of Fame players. Wilt Chamberlain, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Shaquille O'Neal, and Kyle Malone. Now, while Durant's scoring is well known, his defense is vastly underrated. It, it really is. Unless people don't, and I'm in people watching right now. It's pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> weird. Underrated. Uh, of the nearly 300 players that contested at least 250 shots last season, 
Durant led all of them in field goal percentage allowed as opponents shot 33% when contested by Durant. Now, the Warriors, they ranked seventh in defensive efficiency last season. So, meaning Durant, is, it could improve this game, but we've seen this before. We've seen when stars get together and stats the first year are, are not what people think. They think, all right, well, if uh, Durant had 16 more points per game than Harrison Barnes did and he's taking the spot, then we can go by the points per game the Warriors already had and add another 16. That's not the same because – it depends each game who gets who's going to get the ball. Now, Curry already said, hey, I'm fine if Durant's going to be the face of this franchise, which he's very humble, and a lot of people are going to write him off. But you have to look at it at, in his position. When you are the face of the franchise, it's hard to say that you're willing to just give that up to somebody. You know, it's, it's like if uh, if – I guess if you look at LeBron James and if Dwayne Wade were to sign with the Cavs, which is not going to happen, but if that were, it's like saying, I'm okay with Dwayne Wade being fran- the face of the franchise. Or I guess it did happen when LeBron went to the, the Heat. I should have just used that one. And LeBron then became the franchise of the Heat when we've all known that Dwayne Wade's really the franchise, uh, the face of the franchise for the Heat. So it, it's kind of that situation of you letting him come in and, and whether he truly means it or not, and I'm not saying he doesn't, but it's hard to see a player in that position just be like, here you go. But uh, Harrison Barnes, he's going to sign with the D- Dallas Mavericks, uh, a four-year max deal worth $94.4 million. Not bad at all. Also, the Warriors trade, uh, the Mavs agreed to a trade with the Warriors to acquire Andrew Bogut and his uh, base salary of just over $11 million. So they took that salary cap off the number. And uh, I saw a picture. I think we've all seen it, and I think it's true. If somebody dares to play as the Warriors in NBA 2K17, hands will be thrown. That's without a question. It will be thrown. My cousins, if you're watching this and 2K17 comes out and I come over, if you dare pick the Warriors, we will throw hands. What's up? I've got some amazing news. You can now buy the short sports show apparel on Teespring. That's right. I have two different designs up already, and they're amazing, and I love them, and I know you guys will love them too. Hurry now, as these shirts are only up for a certain number of days, and then they're gone. My goal is to sell at least 50 of each design, and the more they sell, the longer they're available. So help me make that happen. Teespring is a platform that makes it easy for anyone to create and sell high-quality products that people love with no cost or risk. So go to www.teespring.com slash stores slash the short sports show today. And after you make your purchase, tweet the show for a chance to be on the following week's show with me. Now, back to the show. Their general manager, Sam Presti, expressed the team's disappointment over Durant's departure in a statement. Quote, Kevin made an incredible, mar- excuse me, indelible mark on the Thunder organization and the state of Oklahoma as a founding father of this franchise. Should have been a Sonic, but whatever. We can't adequately uh, uh, articulate what he meant to the foundation of this franchise and our success. While clearly disappointing that he has chosen to move on, the core values that he helped establish only lead us, uh, only lead to us thanking him for the tangible and intangible ways that he helped our program. End quote. Now the Thunder will take some time. Uh, before making any roster decisions, and particularly relating to all-star point guard Russell Westbrook's future. One option the team is considering is it attempting to renegotiate and extend his contract for Westbrook and uh, before he becomes a free agent next year. But if he chooses not to extend his contract over the summer, sources believe Thunder will con- uh, consider fielding trade offers for Westbrook. Now, with Durant going to Golden State Warriors, the Thunder can make some moves to free up cap space to keep Westbrook long-term. The All-Star guard is slated to earn $17.8 million this season, and it's eligible to add up to another $8 million to his contract and could add years to the deal to, uh, to make himself, excuse me, take himself off the free agent market in 2017. With the salary cap expected to leap again next summer, however, Westbrook could stand and earn more money by waiting and signing a new contract with the Thunder, uh, excuse me, Thunder, or another team. Then, so he could just be like, "No, I'm just play. I'm gonna play with the 17.8 that I'm gonna make this year, and I'm come back next year 
I'm going to do basically what Durant did. I'm going to look at all the offers out there. Obviously, the Thunder are the only team that can pay him more um, before taxes are involved. And he could be like, all right, I can take a, a five-year, hundred and something million dollar deal with uh, the Thunder next season. Or I can just wait it out and see what I can get. It's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out. My question to you is, will Russell Westbrook play for the Oklahoma City Thunder this season? If so, does he stay in 2017? Or does he become a free agent in 2017? If he doesn't, where do you see him going? And what are the trade offers? And if you dare say the Los Angeles Lakers trading Brandon Ingram, uh, D'Angelo Russell, and someone else, if you dare bring up that option, he goes to the Lakers, I will, I will personally come to where you live and just debate you because I, I'm not going to hit you. I'm not going to have any assault on me. But I, I, my, my, my main thing is I don't want that to happen. I like Russell Westbrook. I like the Lakers. I don't want the Lakers to make that stupid offer. Um, I'd rather just, even though they spent a ridiculous amount of money on players that really shouldn't, I would like to see, uh, you know, maybe getting them next year, maybe? Free agency? I don't know. I don't know. Let me know in the comment section if you think Russell Westbrook will stay in OKC in 2016 or will he be on someone else's roster in 2016. Paul Gasol has finalized a two-year deal with the San Antonio Spurs that will be in excess of $30 million uh, a year, which is going to be pretty nice, pretty nice. Uh, Gasol, who turned 36 on Wednesday, spent the past few seasons with the Chicago Bulls and gave them a solid offensive punch down on the blocks. Uh, and uh, also, last year, he averaged 16 and a half points and 11 rebounds for the Bulls. Uh, the team missed the playoffs last year. Missed the playoffs, but he did well. Now, the problem is, uh, well, obviously, the Spurs also, they mo- they traded Boris Diaw to the Utah Jazz for a guy who was like a, a second-round pick last year, played overseas. Uh, his last name is Hadlin, Hadlin, something like that. Uh, you know, it sucks. Boris Diaw was a huge contributor to the Spurs, and now you're getting good solved. But now it comes the question, is, is Tim Duncan going to stay? Is he going to retire? Now, obviously, maybe after the show he retires, but uh, it's looking like he will retire, which absolutely sucks. I would love to see him play just one more year. But it's, it's, it's not looking too good. and It's just, it's just sad. It's just really sad because you want him to give it your all. I'm sorry. That was stupid. But anyways, it's looking like he's about done uh, with the Spurs, which, which sucks. But... A guy that might be done with his organization as well is Dwayne Wade. Now, the Miami Heat, they offer him a two-year, $40 million contract. Apparently, that's that's not going to be enough because now the Denver Nuggets have just offered Dwayne Wade a same two-year deal. This time, they bumped it up, and not by just a tad bit. They bumped it up a lot. $50 million. Not good because Miami Heat now, that's that. Uh, they're struggling. Denver Nuggets and the Chicago Bulls, in addition with the Heat, will continue the talks with Wade. But Denver and Chicago both know that they have more cap space than Miami. Nuggets, again, they offered him a two year deal north of 50 million, so a little bit more. Uh, and with Denver still holding out, uh, or still holding out hope that he accepts it. Milwaukee, they look like they're in a position earlier, but now. They are out of bidding. Wade canceled the plan. And honestly, why would he leave the Miami Heat for Milwaukee? Like, tell me what's in Milwaukee, first of all, that makes you want to leave Miami. And second of all, tell me who's on the Bucks roster that you would rather leave the Miami Heat. I'm waiting. Uh, there's also been <clears throat> excuse me, rumors that Wade is talking to the Cleveland Cavaliers. But multiple sources have said, there's no traction between the parties that they are just, it's not happening. And Wade and the Cavaliers free agent LeBron James were very publicly vacationing together last week with Chris Paul, but sources have said that James is not actively recruiting him to Cleveland. And James, uh, sources told ESPN that he's not willing to take less than the maximum contract that he can sign with the Cavs. So he's not going to take less. He's not taking a, 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 a veteran minimum or to help his team out because they have some type of luxury tactics like 
crazy. No, he wants more. He's going to get his money. He's got a billion-dollar deal with Nike, a lifetime deal, and he's not going. Not happening. He's not going to give it up. So that would only give the Cavs a $3.5 million deal to give away. Does he want to take that when he could get $50 million in two years? $3.5 million, $50 million. It's, it's a huge difference. So it's not going to happen. They can't do a, a sign and trade. Some people brought that up. That, that can't happen either. So where do you see Dwayne Wade signing? That's what I want to know because I want to hear other people's opinions on this. I, I love this stuff. The NBA free agency has been crazy. I think he ends up re-signing with the Heat. I don't think he goes to the Nuggets. I think even that $10 million more, I mean, no disrespect to Denver Nuggets fans, but especially now on the West Coast, you have no chance of winning or even going to the NBA Finals because uh, Dwayne Wade's not going to just take that uh, ride to the next level. And if you heard me right there, I said even Heat. I said Heat instead of Wade. Wade is connected with the Miami Heat. His name is connected. It's it's th- th- you can't change it. So they're just connected forever, and he's gonna end up signing with uh, the Miami Heat because I mean he's got it's got enough money. It's not like it's crazy. So, but that's eesh. let me know. Power forward David West agreed to a one year contract, veterans minimum with the. Uh, I'm trying to see here. Okay, so now I I, I saw my notifications going up here. Uh, Hold on. It's about Dwayne Wade, but we'll keep talking about David West. He signed with the Golden State Warriors for a veteran minimum. Uh, He's going to be there with them. Last year, he opted out of a $12.6 million deal with Indiana to sign a $1.5 million deal with the San Antonio Spurs. Now, he opted out of the Spurs contract same option and uh, 1.5 million declined it is now signing with the Golden State Warriors. So back to Dwayne Wade. So barely does have a meeting in New York with Milwaukee and Chicago and possibly Miami. So sorry for YouTube. They they just got the wrong they got the wrong stuff. Oh well. Okay, so back back to my show here. Back to you guys wanting to hear me. Um, so David West, he's gone. He's signing with the Golden State Warriors, which he was he signed for the Spurs to get the uh to sign to obviously get a championship. That didn't happen. So now he signs with uh <laughs> Golden State Warriors after doing or after uh, Kevin Durant signs. It's I think it's pretty funny. I think it's pretty funny that he goes and does that now. Uh, last news here as we wrap up the show. Ray Allen, one of the greatest shooters in NBA history, is now considering making a comeback, according to league sources. Believe it or not, Allen's representative reached out to none other than the Golden State Warriors recently about, possi- about the possibility of Allen joining the Western Conference champs. At this point, the Warriors are unsure whether they want to pursue the future Hall of Famer, sources said. Allen, who will turn 41 on July 20th, is not absolutely sure he wants to return after sitting out the past two seasons. But he's intrigued about the possibility of playing for another championship. So in addition to the Warriors, he's, uh, he would consider joining the Cavs, again, with, you know, with LeBron, San Antonio Spurs, and the Los Angeles Clippers. During his 18-year playing career, Allen was known for the one of the league's best conditioned athletes. That, along with a three-point shooting, yeah, it, it was it was it's a little intriguing now. In 2013, his last season that he played in, Allen sal- salvaged the title hopes of LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, and the Heat by t- making a game-time three-pointer, 5.2 seconds left, remaining the force overtime against the San Antonio Spurs in Game 6 of the Finals. <laughs> I'm not a Spurs fan, but I watched it. My family's a Spurs fan. And it was so sad to watch it go down. Uh, Miami obviously went on to win the series uh, in seven games. Oh, well. But that would be interesting to see Ray Allen come back, wouldn't it? I mean, see dust coming out of his shoes every time he shoots, a jumper or whatever. That'd be kind of fun to watch. But 
I don't think it happens, but that would be fun to watch once again. I thought I'd throw it out there. Thought I let my YouTube people know as well. Come on over and listen to the rest of the show. Uh, and I think honestly, I kind of just lied to them because that's that's the end of the show. Thank you guys so much for listening. As always, God first, God bless. I love you guys so much. Again, I'll be in Houston, Texas this week. Uh, this or this uh, Saturday. Go see Inner Grind. Go check it out. It's going to be an awesome time. I know you guys would enjoy it. There's going to be prizes. Uh, obviously, there's going to be workouts. <laughs> it's an inside and outside facility. You got everything from whether you're just trying to get in shape uh, or you know lose weight, whatever it might be, gain muscle, whatever it might be. He's got it for you. Multiple NFL players are going to be there, guys. So if you want to go get autographs, talk to them, take pictures, that you will have a chance to as well. Links are in the description down below where you can go see him and get more information, uh, including the address. Uh, but, yeah, it's going to be awesome. Go like them on Facebook. And uh, if you're listening to this on iTunes, give me a rating, please. I absolutely love you if you do. Um, again, Teespring, I got to sell these. I only got 10 or 11 more days left on Teespring. So, please, 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 please uh, buy the shirt. You're absolutely, I love them. I, actually, I really do love it. Uh, it's uh, it's make sports radio great again. It's it's kind of like uh, you know when uh, people are saying make America great again. It's make sports radio great again. And I'm not endorsing obviously Donald Trump or anybody because he says make America great again. I just thought it was a great phrase to put on a shirt. Uh, so it's got uh, the shades and it's got a beard that I do not have, but I will I will I'm I'm working on it, guys. I'm working on to have that beard. <laughs> um, and on the back, it shows where you can listen to the show, of course, and, and, and let him know. You got the short sports show and then 16 on the back for 2016. So, again, thank you guys so much for the support. Follow me on Twitter at Short Sports Show. As always, God first, God bless, guys. Uh, also, uh, as you guys know, I'm a Christian. I, I don't, you know, try to Christian bump you or whatever, try to Bible thump you, of course. But uh, for those of you that are Christians, I do have a awesome prayer um, that I've, I saw from uh, Lecrae's book, Unashamed. If you have not read it yet, I've read it cover to cover, and I'm going to read it again because I absolutely loved it. Uh, it's all, uh, called Unashamed. Uh, if you want, obviously, uh, other people that you know not interested, it's cool. You can end the show here. Uh, for, th- for those of you that uh, do, I love you guys to join me in this prayer. I do it every show from now on. I've done it for the past two weeks, um, and I absolutely love this. It, it relates right to the show, and anytime you have a, a special event going, uh, I absolutely love it. So if you guys want to join me here, uh, Father, allow us to use our gifts to paint an accurate picture of your creativity and your goodness today. Help us to stay out of the way of your will being done. We want to play a role, but we don't want to take the lead. We're extras in your movie, but not the star of this show. May we be humble. May we be grateful. May we be unashamed. Amen. God bless you guys. I will see you guys next Monday. As always, God first, God bless. I'm out. Peace. Forever. I'ma do this here forever. Forever. I'ma do this here forever. Forever. I'ma do this here forever. Forever. Uh, I didn't came way too far for me to stop it now. I didn't work way too hard just to drop it now. We came so